It is a gorgeous, like 60 degree sunny day. Funny day to be talking about growing plants inside, which this is what we're gonna talk about today. Today's episode two of Sprout With Me, but it's too nice to be inside, so we're gonna talk outside because, to be honest, so far this has been a huge failure, and I wanna tell you what went wrong and what I'm doing, what I'm changing. So let's get into Sprout With Me episode two. About a week ago, we released the first episode of Sprout With Me, and uh, we showed you a way that we were going to attempt to grow, well, to do sprouted sprouts inside of a mason jar. We did mung beans, we did radishes, we did broccoli. Ah, get out of there, pup. And now I would like to unveil a big, beautiful failure. Whoosh, ah! Look at that nastiness. Let's see, can we open that up and... Okay, so, yeah. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but they are covered in mold. And now they're actually dried out. It's been a few days. I just abandoned them all together. <laughs> the mung beans did sprout and we did eat them. I didn't even film it because it was like, we had a couple mung beans, big deal. Not really the goal here. The radishes and the broccoli both molded by day two. So I have a problem with my setup. <laughs> I talked to my mom who used to do a ton of sprouting and she gave me some advice and some tips. So I'm gonna try some new things out. And I actually got some new things to, uh, to work with this system. But we are gonna start transitioning, sprout with me. We're gonna keep trying on sprouts, keep seeing if this method with the mason jars will work. Well, let me show you what I got. Let me show you the upgrades here. So here is our old setup with the cloth and there's our nasty moldy sprouts. They'll make you know, good in the garden. There we go, compost. Hey, they smell nice anyway. Uh, now what we're gonna use is these guys. Episode one of this series, Sprout With Me, was to really just uh, encourage everybody right now who may be at home. This is gonna be noisy if I fudge it with this the whole time. Let me just open it and then we'll, then we'll talk. So episode one of more packaging. There we go. Ooh. Episode. There we go. Episode one of Sprout With Me was all about just doing something right now. If you're at home and you're worried about growing, not having enough food because of this pandemic going around and you know, if you're concerned or worried, this is something to do. It's not gonna provide your family with all your food, but sprouts are very nutritious and a great place to add nutrients if you are staying home under quarantine. You know, stock up on beans, stock up on rice, stock up on cereal, things that are shelf stable, but grow your own nutrients because something like sprouts you can actually keep in a bag, in a Mylar bag inside of a, you know, a cupboard for a long time and then bust them out when you need them. So we're trying to grow some sprouts here. The mung beans did okay in this method. Uh, what this will do, so I ordered these. These are little screens. See that little like draining screens. And what I can do now is each day I can wash my sprouts, rinse them off, and just leave this like that and let it all drink, because I think there was too much water. I also think I sprouted too many of the little seeds, the radishes and the, and the, um, the other ones. What were they? Radishes and broccoli. So I think there was just too many because they were too tight. The mung beans, which were bigger, did better. So I'm gonna attempt round two of Sprout With Me. We're gonna do less of the small seeds in a mason jar, and uh, we're gonna get them started with these metal lids. And I wanna show you what I did, because this actually worked cool for draining them. Uh, let me see where I can set this up to show you. So this is the new setup that we're gonna try for Sprout With Me 2.0. We have our quart mason jars. So we're gonna fill a mason jar with our sprouts. I have these little trays I got from my local hydroponic growing center. Fill them 
and make sure to put them in the thing. This has ridges in it, which makes it very easy to have your jar leaning against it and draining out. And the thing is, make sure it drains out all the way. Here's the other one that got all moldy. So I'm gonna line up like six of these jars like that and hopefully have them drain. And I have to leave them more, I think more covered because uh, maybe they're getting too much water. This one, you can see the same thing, just got just a total bloom there of, of mold. So that didn't work. While we're trying Sprout With Me 2.0, let's talk about what's going on over here. And we're gonna move to the shade because it is hot in the sunroom. The baby's gonna steal the whole concept of the video. Oh boy. Cute little baby interruption. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the cutest. It's so hard not to. The other day, the kids and I started some little tiny seedlings. All right. So, right now, we gotta focus on things that we can grow in the hydroponic system. Okay? So anything that's like a lettuce or um, a uh, basil, spinach, find all the lettuces and put them in a the pile. Lettuce. But don't get them wet. But let's uh, let's pop them in. Let's do a few of each. So let's start with. This. We'll show the camera so it knows what's I first. Want to do some let's do bib lettuce first. I right, know these will be very small. Two in each one. Here's one. Yeah. Two. Okay, so we did bib, then we did spinach, then we did arugula. What's in the next? Okay. These are different lettuces, spinaches. My three-year-old was insistent on starting tomatoes, so we started tomatoes. <laughs> but uh, the idea here, we have started seeds in some rock wool cubes. They have been under this humidity dome. It gives them the nice humidity that they need for little seedlings in this tray. And when it's time to plant these, we can pull off those little rock wool cubes and let me show you what we're gonna do for our hydroponic garden this year. We're gonna keep this super simple, super easy. Whoosh. This is what I'm gonna be growing in. We're gonna test out a Kratky hydroponic growing system. I have a half gallon ball jar and I'm going to spray paint this half gallon ball jar black to keep any sunlight out. In the top of this, I'm gonna put a three inch net pot with the rock wool cube in it and fill it with water and nutrient. Crack Key Hydroponics, I'm brand new to this. If you got any suggestions, chat box below. Uh, but check out some YouTube videos. This is really interesting, really easy, kind of like set it and forget it growing of basic things like lettuces. The concept is you start with the water in here. There's no pump, there's no aeration. What happens is the plant starts to suck up the water, which exposes some of the roots to oxygen, which allows them to get the oxygen they need, the nutrient they need is all in here. And in one month's time, in this half gallon jar, you'll grow a head of lettuce. We have a ton of these half gallon jars lying around because of cow milk, and they're not currently being filled with cow milk because we haven't started milking the cows again yet. So we're gonna try growing a hydroponic garden here in the sunroom. You can do this inside under grow lights, but we're gonna try to do it with natural sunlight. And uh, that's how we're gonna be growing our lettuces right now. So we have, we're gonna restart our microgreen, see if we can't get that to work better this time. And we're gonna be prepping our Kratky hydroponic mason jar. So 
uh, links below to the gear that we're currently using for our sprouts and our Kratky hydroponics. If you want to sprout with me, I encourage all of you, everyone, no matter where you are, no matter how much land, if you have electricity and a roof. Your hand, do something. Oh, it's fine. I took my hat off. People know it's hat hair. It's the end of the video, we're babe. Too little, too late. We're gonna cut this today. Say so. goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I like my big hair. Big hair. So if you have a roof and a mason jar and electricity or a roof made of glass, Must be nice. you can do this. Everyone can start doing this. So if you're worried about, and in 30 days you'll have some food. So like, you know, if you're worried about food right now, grow a Crack Key Hydroponic Garden. Google it, watch YouTube videos out there on Crack Key Hy Hydroponics, it's fascinating. I'll put the one right here that I've, I've been watching. Uh, that'll help get you started. And sprout with me, see how we do. What do you mean? Like somebody's gonna be like, I wanna see what's up there and knock it all over. Oh yeah. Shattered glass. Or we take a quick pause from today's video to do our camel train shout out. And we got a camel who's gonna join us for the shout out today. Hi Saul. We have a very special shout out. I figured it'd be nice to get Solomon on, on this one. How you doing, buddy? Kirsten wanted to dedicate today's camel train shout out to her in memory of her loving mother, Yvette, who instilled in her a lifelong love of all things homesteading and health through their food. Really perfect for the camel train. So, uh, hey buddy. Kirsten, thanks for talking about your mom. She sounds like she was an awesome person and uh, she got you off on the right track. Oh. Kirsten's homestead is an apartment in Georgia where she has two white shepherds. Just like one of the white shepherd puppies that we have. This is really cool. Kirsten loves dairy, but when she has milk, it makes her have aches and pains. So she's thrilled to learn about camel milk. Look to see if you can get yourself some camel milk. They do ship it. And uh, thanks for bringing up your mom. That's always nice to, to remember the people that got us where we are, so. Look for your one-of-a-kind Homestead Camel Train t-shirt. You have lifelong pioneer access. Congratulations, and let's get back to the show. So be like that. This is experimental. This is not a demonstration of what to do or how to do things. This is me trying some things out. I'm gonna take my 
my Fox Farm nutrient. I called Fox Farm and asked them how to use it in a crap key system. Basically, a crap key hydroponic system is you add all the nutrient at once, all the water at once, you set your plant and you forget it, you leave it be. They said to go with week four feeding system, pour that in the water, leave it. So I'm gonna try that today. This might work, this might not. So I'm not telling you to do this. Uh, if you research about Crack Key, find your own. I'll put links below to the stuff that the Crack Key system uses. This is me just being a bit experimental because I have this stuff right now and I don't have the other stuff. So maybe this will work or maybe not. I hope it works. Let's try it. I got the pump, submergible pump in my five gallons of water and I'm gonna mix my nutrients and then I'm gonna put them in the jars and then tomorrow we're planting. Okay. The pump agitates the water. That way when you add your nutrient, it gets dispersed into the water. We start with number one, grow, cultivation nation. And I'm supposed to put two teaspoons of number one per gallon. So two times five would be 10 teaspoons. All right, let's do this. This is a perfect example of an area not to let analysis paralysis hold you back. I always get overwhelmed by stuff like this, stuff that involves math, stuff that involves, you know, like chemicals. Um, I always like hold back on doing stuff like this. And I've been like sitting around like, oh, I should do that, I should do that, and I'm just doing it. Worst thing that's gonna happen my plants are not gonna do well. And I can plant more plants. Seed is cheap and uh, we'll just try it again. So if you can see a problem, if you're familiar with hydroponics, you know this Fox Farm fertilization schedule. I did the week four feeding schedule and I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know if I should be giving them more concentrated numbers, less concentrated. I'm not sure what to do because there's no written rules for the Fox Farm thing. I can order the nutrients for the crack key and just follow their exact instructions. Let me know in the comments below. Point me to some good resources. Also, I have to mention, just because I'm wearing this shirt, this is not one of the Parson made Homesteady shirts. This is one of our older ones. The reason we stopped using them was because of the quality. It went down. I'm wearing this shirt because I'm dealing with paint and chemicals today and I didn't want to get one of my new Homesteady shirts. Oh, ruined. But if you're looking at that shirt and thinking, boy, those home study shirts don't hold up. That's why we switched to the Parsons shirts. All right, I got the pump circulating all that. Leave me go for a while. I'll put it in the uh, jars. And once it's got some time in there, at least a half hour to let it all mix up. And then it'll be time to plant, which I'll do tomorrow when my cups arrive. That should do for today though. All right, I've left that run for a good solid hour, and now I'm gonna just pour it into my mason jars, and then ready to plant.
This is my first, uh, pull the chair here. This is my first attempt at a crap key hydroponic garden. What is a crap key hydroponic garden? This is a hydroponic garden that has no pump. No pump to circulate the water through the system. Many hydroponic systems require a pump to bring oxygen to the roots. But the way a crap key system works, you have a container with a lid. Any container, any Rubbermaid tote, a soda bottle, you could, like, this is the most accessible project we have ever shown on this channel, ever. Everybody can do this. Take an old milk jug, you can do this. You need a container with a lid. You need some nutrients, you can order nutrients. The ones I'm using are not the ones that I have read about as working or suggested. So if you're thinking about it, I'll have links below to the stuff that I have. But do some research about Cracky. I am, I, this is my first time ever doing this, so I'm not showing you what to do, I'm just telling you what we're doing. I have a little bit of rock wool, our seedlings we started in our humidity dome a few days ago. They're all growing. The rock wool sits atop of a neck cup. These three inch net cups are perfect fit to fit inside of a half gallon mason jar. They go right in the top. We put some uh, clay pebbles, then rock wool, more clay pebbles, and uh, our little seedling in there. They're painted black or they're wrapped in aluminum to block out sunlight. Inside of this container is water and nutrient. If you wanna grow algae, you let sunlight go through there and feed the algae. If you want to grow plants, you have to black this out so you can paint it. I did a coat of black primer. I did a coat of this stuff here. And then I did a coat of black chalkboard so later I can write on this what each plant is. But I don't have any chalk and I was so excited I, to plant this I forgot what I planted. <laughs> we'll identify it as it grows taller. Uh, the idea that we should have food ready to eat here, if I did everything right, 25 to 35 days. There's very few things that can grow you food quicker. Sprouting in microgreens is quicker, but you don't get the same amount of food. This will grow a whole head of lettuce. Or we have arugula, we have spinach, we have a lot of different things we're trying out here. Maybe some of it will work, maybe all of it will fail. This is our first attempt at Kratky, but go ahead and check out some other videos on Kratky hydroponics. There are people growing all kinds of stuff with the sun in a mason jar. You can do this at home, in an apartment building, anywhere. You don't have to buy mason jars, you don't have to use fancy paint. You can use tin foil around a milk jug. Like, there's no excuse for not trying to do this right now. If you're tired of going to the supermarket and buying food and maybe there's not a lot of food there right now because of this virus going around, this is an awesome way to at least lessen the burden. Maybe you won't grow all your food this way, but lessen the amount of times you have to go out. Three inch net pot in the top of a half gallon mason jar, a little bit of paint. Sprout with me. Let's see how this does. I have, this is a little shelf unit. I actually flipped it upside down because with kids around, I didn't want my mason jars getting pushed off an edge and falling and shattering. So this little thing works really good. They're in here nice and neat. It looks nice. I'm testing out aluminum versus paint to see if one does better than the other. Also, I didn't want to paint a bunch of mason jars until I know that it's gonna work, so. It'd also be cool with the aluminum because we can pull that back and see the roots and see what's going on inside. That'd be really cool for the kids to see. I'm really excited about this. I've been trying to do hydroponics. Back in Connecticut, I had an aquaponics garden that never did anything. And I would love to see, the, the thing with this is it's a set it and forget it system. You put the nutrients in, you put the plants in, and in 30 days you come back and harvest. And there is like nothing homestead project that is like that. So we'll see. We'll see how this does. I'll keep you posted.